2016 will be the 200th anniversary of the High Hawaii. We need to prepare for our celebration for the 200th anniversary of the High Hawaii. And the reason that we're here is because of this statue commissioned by Kalakaua to honor Kamehameha, his achievements in uniting all of the islands in peace, to defend against the international powers coming here and actually splitting up the entire archipelago. 1778, when Captain Cook came, every international vessel has an international symbol. So Kamehameha learns about all of these things. The strongest naval military force was Great Britain's uh, Navy. And that's why you have the British, uh, the Union Jack in the corner. Because if you know it or not, each island was aligning themselves with other countries. So for example, Maui was soliciting uh, help from France. Oahu, they were soliciting help from America. Uh, Kauai, they were aligning themselves with Russia. So Kamehameha was, okay, I'm going with the British. Being that Kamehameha actually um, submitted his country, Ko Hawaii Paiaina, or the Kingdom of Hawaii, to Great Britain under the protection of Great Britain. After he united the islands, the first flag he flew above his house, um, Kailua Kona Ahuena, was actually the, the British Jack, the Union Jack only. Never have no stripes, never have anything. Um, that was to symbolize our relationship with the strongest military force, naval military force in the world. The religion during that time is what gave Kamehameha the mana to unite the islands. Because after his uncle passed, Kalani Opu'u, he was given the charge of caring for the god Ku Kailimoku, the war god. Okay? Ku Kailimoku, his kinolau, his color is red. And that's why you have the bottom stripe, red. Three stripes red. The stripes represents the different seasons and the four major deities um, within the Aikapu, the Hawaiian religion. Yeah, so Kukailimoku is red, his counterpart. So Kukailimoku is the god of um, government, politics. Those two don't work, then you go to war. Um, the white stripe. Um, Kukailimoku's counterpart, Makahiki season. The god Lono. Agriculture, fertility, uh, sports, and peace. And if you see the two, there's only two blue stripes there. And that's the two remaining uh, major deities, which is Kanaloa, who's the god of the ocean and everything to do with the ocean, seafaring, fishing, um, open ocean navigation, that's Kanaloa. And you see the bottom blue? It's all the way across to signify the wide expanse of the ocean, which is where we come from, yeah. Hawaiians, the origin. The other blue is his twin brother. It's Kane. Kane is the god of fresh water. And then if you look at the top straight, top straight is white. So that represents his god, Lono, peace. When I look at the flag, he encapsulated the Aikapu, his religion, which regulated, which protected the environment, which really, in my understanding, um, allowed for every, all elements in Hawaii to live in balance and to grow in, an, in abundance as much as possible. To me, those stripes not only represent the eight major islands, the order that it's in is important. So if there's peace, flag flies upright. 
Britain are, is our friends. You know, they recognize us. You flip the flag over, the top stripe changes from white to red. You know, when flags are upside down, it's the international symbol of a country in distress. So that kind of, well, it fits into what Kamehameha was thinking in actually the order of the, the stripes also, yeah. January 1st, 1862. It's the first color print newspaper in the world. And in it has the history of the Hai Hawaii. Wahana mua ia ke ia hai i ka makahiki umi kumama valu umi kumama ono no Kamehameha e kahi. The Hawaiian flag was designed for King Kamehameha the first in the year 1816. Hawaii is the first country to have a color print newspaper in the world in 1862. Um, I focus most of my energy in reading Hawaiian language newspapers and bringing history like this um, for our people to know today. On the 25th of February, 1843, Lord George Paulet hauled down this flag with the purpose of adding these islands to the sovereignty of Great Britain and raised the British flag on flagstaffs throughout the group, which remained up until the 31st of July of the same year when Admiral Thomas restored the flag, being responsible for the illegal act of Lord George Paulet. To earn my master's thesis in Hawaiian language, that one paragraph I found over a thousand references in Hawaiian language newspapers from 1843 talking about this specific um, day and the events that occurred. Lord George Paulet pulls up with his battleship, points all of his cannons to Iolani Palace because back then the ocean used to go right up to the palace, yeah, used to be really close. Pulled up his ship, points his cannons, and basically commands Kamehameha III through a letter. Um, I'm gonna take over your country, I'm gonna take all of your money, and all of my people will be protected. You need to respond by tomorrow, 12 o'clock. If you don't, I'm gonna start opening fire on you. So Kamehameha III and Kekauluohi, they actually respond with a letter and uh, provisionally give up the country to Lord George Paulet. So that's what starts what we all now know as Uamau Ke'ea Kaina I Kapono, is this exchange of letters. Kamehameha III and Kekauluohi, they write a letter to, to their people. So I have given the ea away. And that's the first time that I've seen the usage of ea in that way. As the meaning of sovereignty, independence. I've given away our sovereignty. I've given away our independence to Lord George Paulet to avoid bloodshed and war. Kamehameha III, he sends envoys out to reach the Queen in England to ask for help to correct the e illegal act that Lord George Paulet has um, committed. Admiral Thomas is the commander of all Brit British naval forces in the entire Pacific. So he hears about this, he comes straight to Hawaii, first thing he does is take down all of the British flags because he has the power to act on behalf of the Queen. After he does his investigation, finds that Lord George Paulet's actions wasn't warranted and he didn't have the approval by the Queen. Um, on July 31st, 8 a.m. in the morning, in Kauai Ha'o Church, they honor um, Admiral Thomas. And that's when Kamehameha III utters the words, 
ua mau, ke ea, o ka aina i ka pono. That's the first time and that's the origin of the national model of the Kingdom of Hawaii. They all march to Thomas Square, 12 o'clock noon, they have a ceremony where the British flag is up. And in ceremony, they take down the British flag, they switch it with the high Hawaii, and they pull up the Hawaiian flag, and they proclaim that day as La Ho'i Ho'i Ea, or the day that Ea was returned. The day that sovereignty and independence was returned. The day that the five month illegal occupation by Great Britain was corrected. That became the first national holiday of the Kingdom of Hawaii, July 31st, 1843. America was present, France was present, Great Britain was present. So, so this story, when you asked me about the history of the flag, I was like, oh, does he really know what he's asking? Because there's so much, so much layers, to the story. layers to the story and connections. And that turned into my 100-page uh, uh, thesis all in Hawaiian, um, using only Hawaiian language uh, resources. Because the story is very different from our Hawaiian language writers and our Hawaiian language people than what you read in English. Really, every place is where this high Hawaii should be allowed to be flown at the highest level. And the story about it is unbelievable, about how come I'm not, and to me, everyone should know this story about Kamehameha uniting the islands and how all of these things are related to, uh, to each other. And then when you see the breadth of the story, you cannot not be in amazement of everything. And that's my ambition, goal, and purpose is to share that with everybody.